to Executive Director of the Tony Award winning Trinity Repertory Company, Tom Parrish. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here, Molly. So excited to have you. So recently, Trinity Rep announced their 2018-2019 season, so we wanted to have you in, talk a little bit about what is coming up, what we can look forward to. So thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, we have a great season uh, coming up here for 2018-19, which we announced last week. And uh, it's one of our largest seasons ever, uh, epic scale, epic stories, uh, many familiar characters told in new and exciting ways. And uh, so the season starts off in October and uh, runs straight through May. I can tell you about those shows now. Yeah, so we're really excited okay. about that. Before we dip into it, I want to talk a little bit about kind of what went into this. And like you mentioned, um, one of the largest productions that you're putting on. And also you have the commitment to offering um, a more diverse storytelling mm -hmm. as well, having more more women on board and more people of cover, color being able to tell stories. Talk about Trinity's uh, commitment to that. Sure. Um, so we read literally hundreds of scripts every year when we're looking to choose a season. We really think about you know what does the community and the audience need right now? And part of our role as a cultural organization is, is helping to shape and grow uh, and innovate in a Rhode Island culture. And so um, part of that is making sure that we are uh, telling everyone's stories and providing an equitable, diverse, and inclusive environment uh, for that storytelling. And so uh, we're really looking for stories from a variety of voices. Um, and because most of our tickets are sold on a season subscription uh, to subscribers, we want to ensure a great balance amongst the season uh, with comedy and drama and musicals and classics and new plays, everything uh, all together so people get a really uh, exciting year. And really kind of reflecting what's happening not only now, but reflecting the community that, that it represents, correct? Correct. Correct. So it was. It was. Uh, we we had a lot of conversations about like what are people thinking about right now? What are they feeling? What do? How could we help people navigate the world? And and that's. I often say that theater is uh, helpful in navigating the gray because the world isn't black and white. And so by putting stories on stage, uh, people can start to explore those areas that are challenging them. I think that's so true. So uh, a very exciting season coming up. So let's jump in. All right, so the season begins with Pride and Prejudice by uh, Kate Hamill. So we're talking a little bit about that. What can we expect? Well, this version of Pride and Prejudice is hilarious. It's an effervescent new adaptation. Um, but it's, you know, the classic story <laughs> of Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy and the will they or won't they get together. And, uh, but it's told in a really exciting and contemporary way. So it's a lot of fun, uh, characters, actors playing multiple characters, and it's fast paced and uh, minimalist in its, in its set design. Um, and Kate Hamill's done some amazing adaptations of Jane Austen pieces. There was one recently at American Repertory Theater. She did Sense and Sensibility, and uh, both Sense and Sensibility and Pride and Prejudice, those at adaptations are being produced all over the country uh, over these past few years and into the next season. So she's she's got Jane Austen down. Okay. She does. So that runs October 4th through November 4th, so we can look forward to that. And then Trinity Rep will continue the long tradition of A Christmas Carol November 8th through December 30th. Yes. Always fun. Always fun. It's the 41st anniversary season. This past year's Christmas Carol was the highest selling show in Trinity Rep history, wow. uh, which was fantastic. It was a very Merry Christmas at Trinity <laughs> Rep this year, um, but a fantastic production. The show always sells out. We have uh, one of the top five highest selling Christmas Carols in the oh, wow. country. So it's very popular. It's a big tradition here in Rhode Island and Southern New England. It will be hard to top that, but I'm sure it will happen. Yeah, here's here's hoping. I hope you know. I hope every year we can break the record, but you know. Here's we'll hoping. Yeah. Okay, so again, we give you the dates for that, and then following uh, the beginning of the new year, uh, Marcus Gardley's Black Odyssey. This looks so cool. It is very cool. Um, I read the script and was blown away. It's totally breathtaking theater. It's it's the type of story that can only be told in the theater. It's 
epic in scale. It's going to be beautiful on stage. It's, it's basically an adaptation of Homer's Odyssey, um, but set with an Iraqi war veteran, presumed dead, who is trying to get back home to his family, um, being controlled by a host of gods, some benevolent, some not. Um, and he has to revisit his past and his ancestral past, and um, it really integrates uh, African American history of the past 50 years with Homer's Odyssey. And um, so that's going to be very exciting. For people who love The Mountaintop uh, by Katori Hall two seasons ago, they will love uh, Black Odyssey. It's by, directed by the same director, Kent Gash. Uh, so we're very excited with that. And what is, makes it even more exciting is we are pairing it with an adaptation of The Iliad, uh, a production, a solo show called An Iliad, where a lone poet uh, tells stories of gods and goddesses and war um, over the millennia. And it's a breathtaking tour de force performance. Okay, so that An Iliad, that's just the one person, and that's for one week only, February 6th through February 10th. So, I mean, that's just incredible, and I think those two shows are going to be outstanding. Yeah. Very exciting. Okay, so then we're looking at Macbeth, so another classic that runs through uh, January 31st through March 3rd. What's in mm -hmm. store for Macbeth? Well, Macbeth's going, it's a classic tale of uh, a man pursuing his quest for the, the throne of Scotland, um, bloody and full of battles and evil witches. <laughs> um, it's it's a, a fantastic uh, Shakespeare. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's also his shortest uh, play, so it runs pretty quickly. Um, but a great story. Some, uh, Lady Macbeth is a wonderful character. This one of theater's great uh, sort of paths to madness as uh, she confronts her guilt um, over how they rise to power. Um, and Kurt Columbus, our artistic director, is directing it, and he has some uh, special plans for it that uh, aren't quite solid yet, so we, will, uh, we won't let the cat out of the bag. So we're not yet. filling you in quite yet, yeah. but it should, be, it should be exciting. Okay, so yeah. then we're, this, is, this is neat. So the world premiere by Lauren Yi of the Song of the Summer. So this is pretty neat. March 14th through April 14th, the world premiere here. Yes, so we commissioned, uh, we have a grant from the Steinberg Charitable Foundation that um, allows us to commission plays. And so we commissioned Lauren Yee, who's one of the hottest playwrights in the country right now, being produced all over, to write a play specifically for our acting company. And uh, this play, The Song of Summer, is uh, about a young pop star who has written that song of the summer that you know everyone knows. So cool. And, uh, the play is set where he's left his concert and went back to his hometown to meet up with his old uh, childhood piano teacher and, and connect with uh, some folks from his youth. And uh, it's really a, a heartwarming comedy. Um, and it's sort of about fame and the price of fame and connecting back to your past in order to move forward. I love that idea, and there's there always is a song of the summer. So totally I'm just is. thinking what it was last summer and trying to think of summer what, before that. What was it? It was Despacito. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now I'm trying to think of what it was before that, and and what. I was like what, thinking about like Gangnam Style at some point, <laughs> right? Like that was was some song of the summer. Yeah, that was probably. <laughs> I don't know what year that was, but yeah. 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 We'll say that that'll be the song for the play. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. We actually so for the write, play. Did they well, write no, one? for the play we yeah. have to write the song, the song of the right? summer um, because it is in the play. So, um, so Lauren has to uh, come up with. She has what, to figure She has it to out. come up with what the song of the summer is. Um, but you'll get to see it next. Hopefully, spring. it takes off. <laughs> it, it will, and if it ends up that the song of the summer from our play, Song of Summer, becomes the song of the of summer, summer, that would be awesome. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that, well that's that's so neat, um, and I, I love that idea, and I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so when the song of the summer is uh, all wrapped up, oh, wait, no, are they running yeah. at the same time? 
Uh, no. Okay. The spring overlaps a little okay. bit. Yeah, okay. Then we're looking at, sorry, <laughs> I'm just thinking of the song of the summer. Yeah. Little Shop of Horrors. This is fun. Little Shop of Horrors is fun. It is written by one of the dynamic duos of songwriting, um, Howard and Ashman, and uh, Howard Ashman, Alan Menken, and uh, they write all sorts of uh, great uh, scores and music for Disney and others. Um, but the, the great story of Seymour and Audrey on the skid row um, in the flower shop trying to, you know, Seymour wants to live the American dream, he wants to get the girl, um, and sort of what's the price he will pay in order to achieve the American dream. And he finds this plant, uh, and it's a huge sensation, but it turns out it drinks blood <laughs> and is set on world domination. And uh, for those that don't know, the musical actually has a different ending than the movie. Um, so it, it's really sort of about fame and the uh, price of fame and the American dream and the, and the cost of that and what happens when you feed the plant. Mm. Has Trinity done Little Shop Horse before? We have not. We oh, have so this will be this will be pretty cool. I'm always interested to see um, the company's take on shows and whether it's a classic and just reimagining mm -hmm. it, or if you haven't done this before, yeah. what how it'll all work out. Well, especially we, in today's I, we, time, we, we, right? Oh yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> that's what's always it's, so cool. You know, it's it's really interesting in relation to like news and stories yeah. and power like exactly. when you feed the story and it exactly. keeps growing and growing and growing until it takes over the world right yeah so you know there are some yeah. relations to uh the world today um and trendy rep when we do musicals we always do them in a new and inventive way we have ragtime which is in rehearsals right now and um it won't it's it's very different than the ragtime that uh opened on broadway in 1999 i mean that that story of nostalgia uh, for the turn of the 20th century is, uh, it doesn't fit as well in today's world. Um, so we're telling it in a really exciting way. It's gonna be fantastic. And the same will be true with um, Little Shop of Horrors. And you know, it's always an interesting production, that, pro that show is an interesting production challenge because we have to create these puppets yeah. that, and, and the last puppet eats people. So like, <laughs> it's a, a fun production challenge. Uh, okay, and then the season will close with Marisol, which runs May 16th through June 16th uh, in the Dowling Theater. Yes, so Marisol is a contemporary classic written by Jose Rivera, who is uh, a leading Latino playwright. Um, and interestingly, um, Marisol was written about 25 years ago. It came out just around, just before Angels in America. Um, and the story of Marisol, it's um, about a, a young woman named Marisol who lives in New York City and she's, uh, the world is sort of crumbling around her. She's visited by her guardian angel. The angels are in a battle with God to save the universe. Um, and it's like the moon has disappeared and food has turned to salt. It's sort of this apocalyptic world and Marisol is trying to find hope and a way to move forward in that world where these huge powers are are fighting and uh, so again topical people can probably connect yeah. with that all, story <laughs> all, all of the all of the plays next year were, were chosen because yeah. they are they are resonant with the world that we're living in and, and many of the things people are thinking about. And, and so we, we use drama and we use comedy and we use music to, um, you know, to bring the community together to really talk about how to, how to live. Be able to connect, yeah. engage, and reflect on what's happening. Yeah. And uh, I think the company always does a really good job at doing that. Um, so that's the 2018-2019 season. Before we let you go, Tom, of course, a big event happening within the community are the Pell Awards. Yes. Uh, the big gala is coming up in May. Care to share about what's happening? Well, on uh, Monday, May 21st, uh, we will host the 21st annual Pell Awards at the Water Fire Arts Center. And uh, it's going to be a fantastic evening. It starts at 6 p.m. with a VIP reception and then the awards dinner at 7 p.m. 
Uh, we will have some wonderful entertainment uh, from the acting company and others. And uh, we'll be honoring uh, some great community leaders, um, in, including Morris Nathanson and Janine uh, Chartier and uh, Jane Nelson uh, with Pell Awards uh, for Rhode Island. And then uh, more announcements to come on our national award winner. And uh, it all raises money for Trinity Rep's uh, arts programming and education programs. So it's a fantastic evening, Creative Black Tie. Tickets are available at trinityrep.com uh, if people would like to join us. Wonderful. Those are always a great evening. And looking forward to the, the other announcements. Yes. Soon to come. Soon to come. Soon to come. I can't pull it out of you today, apparently. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're, we're working like, on nope, it. nope. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you're not going to get it today. <laughs> That's all right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. It's always fun Great. to get your insight and your intake and looking forward to the 2018-2019 season. But like you said, you're in rehearsals uh, right now. Yes. So, so, so this season's still going strong. Still going. Native Gardens starts performances next week. It's going to be hilarious. And then Ragtime starts later in April. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for joining us Great. here, Tom, Thank with the you. Trinity Repertory Company. We're wrapping up here on Go Local Live for the 3 o'clock hour. Kate Nagel kicks things off here in just a few moments for all things news and politics. I'm Molly O'Brien. Have a wonderful weekend. Be safe.